Um, I, I can't hear you. Devin. Yeah, Devin. me neither. Welcome I was to like, the- oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Devin, one of those things where you know, are you are you there, Devin? I'm here. Can you hear me now? Now I can. Yes, there you I are. guess my microphone failed me. Anyway, you guys, I'm Devin Howard. As you know, you can find me on Instagram. Is that Devin Howard? I don't know if you guys did the intros already, but if not, Jackie, tossing it to you. <laughs> yes. Um, what's up, everybody? It's your girl Jackie Ray. You can follow me on all things social media at Jerry the Fanatic. And I'm Britt Johnson. You can follow me on all social media at I am Britt Johnson. Hey, it's your boy Chris. Follow me everywhere at CK2K. You guys, look, we have backdrops now. <laughs> we are so cool and official. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know how long it took us to set these up, like insane, but we got it. We're here. Yep. We're mm-hmm. here. They look great. Now we look uh, so official, working from home, doing our yeah. self-distancing live show. So right. I don't get to see my dresser behind me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Or my hanging plants. <laughs> right. I love the plants. So I don't know if you guys have heard yet, but um, the NFL announced that they were going to do a virtual draft, which is like kind of crazy because um, John Harbaugh actually just spoke out about it and said that he thinks that this is like super dangerous because how they're going to do it is all the personnel, like everybody is going to be just working remotely from their home. So they're not even getting together at all. Like originally some people thought this meant just the players weren't going to show up and they were just going to like have them FaceTime in or whatever the case is, but all the teams, personnel is all staying at home. So each team is going to be on a zoom call. And, um, John Harbaugh said that he feels like people are going to hack it. You know, people can go into the Zoom and say they're not doing sound or video and they can listen in on to what these people are, these teams are saying about their picks and stuff like that. And we all know the Patriots are going to be the number one team trying to line up to see what everybody else is trying to get in their picks. So I think it's kind of crazy because this is the first time the NFL has really done anything like this. Like at least before the, the league has always been together and like, Maybe other rounds they have where they just have people, like, they'll Skype in the players and you can see their reaction from at home for the players that haven't been able to be there. But, like, it's super, super crazy. What do you guys think of this? Like, is John right by saying that? I mean, yeah, we hear about people getting hacked all the time. I remember Target got hacked. If Target can get hacked, then this, <laughs> right. this, this draft Nobody can get hacked. Um, but, I, I mean, what else are you going to do, though? Are we going to just hold the draft? I think that the goal is to just try to move forward in some way and, and hope that we're going to get back to normalcy soon. So you don't want to just stop everything. But I, I, I appreciate the hack rule. You know, you, you told us about the TikTok yesterday in China. Yeah. Hacking TikTok. So, I mean, I think it's a, real, it's a real fear. It makes sense to me. Chris, what do you think? The thing is, I think that there's, you know, when the the person who uh, initiates the, me- the meeting, they can, you know, control everyone's audio and stuff like that. But I, I still don't believe that that's enough. Like, there, if they want to, and like, like Britt said, the Patriots really want to, they can find a way. So I, I'm all for it. I feel like it has to happen. I just, I just feel like they need to think about it a little bit more on how they're going to do it. Because I don't know if this is going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, I think... Okay, go ahead, Britt. I was just going to say, maybe not even do it on Zoom. Like, they don't need to see each other. Maybe just get on, like, a phone conference call. So that way it's, like, a little bit more secure. But um, uh, Zoom just came out and said that they actually are going to try to do everything they can because they have been getting messages about hackers kind of coming into people's conference calls. So they're trying to up their security measures before the NFL draft happens, which will be towards the end of the month. But um, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. And then it's never just after all these man. players. But the players, I'm sure, will get to – I don't know. They actually – I read the whole entire thing that the NFL came out with, and they didn't really specify, like, if they're going to still televise it all and, like, go to certain – you know, like, you know how they used to go in um, teams, like – rooms where all the all the all the personnel were and they do like clips and show them kind of doing stuff if they're going to go into without sound obviously go into different um zoom chats and then go to players and see where they are hanging out with their friends or family or whatever like is it or is it just going to be a ticker at the bottom you know where it's just going to be announced this player goes to this team like they haven't really like specified at what degree they're going to televise it. But obviously, like, people want to see it. Like, I used to take off the whole weekend and watch yeah. watch the draft with my brother. And I would, like, back in the day when they didn't have it all the way up, I'd, like, write down all the picks and, like, 
remember everybody like and I still remember Vernon Davis being my favorite draft pick when he was drafted like seventh overall by the 49ers because he was like crying so hard when he got drafted I thought that was so cute like it's going to be sad to not have those moments for the draft this year so I hope we can at least see the players when they find out that what team they went with or what pick they went with I hope they still televise it to some degree but they actually haven't really said anything about that part of it I mean it might be better to push it back but I know the NFL is in order to stay on track, you have to pr- proceed with the draft. So I get yeah. that. But, you know, at the same time, I'm with you. Like, we don't really – I mean, you know, you've seen how Cowboys travel to the draft. I always love to see hear them, you know, but they don't get to boo as much anymore now, though, because Jason's gone. But um, I still like <laughs> to see the fan reactions personally. You know what I mean? I love yeah. when somebody's drafted that they love and, and things go well, and I love when they boo and act – you're just missing, and I think you're going to end up with, like, a WrestleMania-type draft, which is going to be garbage. It was garbage, you guys. I don't <laughs> care what y'all say about WrestleMania. It was terrible. <laughs> well, the people in the chat seem to think that this is a really, really bad idea. Anthony said virtual draft is nonsense with all the hackers getting in. Also, people will try to make it look like a Madden one, and that's stupid. We have people saying postpone the draft. Um, it seems like at least the people watching today are not a fan of this virtual draft idea. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But in the meantime, I want to switch gears and get into some of our need-to-know news stories for today, starting off with this kind of surprising one about LaMelo Ball. So last week, we learned that LaMelo Ball and his business manager, Jermaine Jackson, purchased the Illawarra Hawks, the NBL team that LaMelo was playing with, Um But apparently Jermaine jumped the gun when he made that announcement and said that it was a done deal. Um, The NBL immediately pushed back and said that there was a miscommunication and that the purchase and even the negotiations have not been finalized yet. The NBL commissioner said, quote, it did catch us by surprise. A few people got a bit ahead of themselves there. It's worth pointing out that we have had good discussions with LaMelo and his management, as well as Tori Laval, who is a local businessman in Wollongong and has been a proponent of putting that consortium together they are one of a number of parties that we are talking to so there are multiple people who are vying for ownership of the team the nbl right now is set on taking its time and vetting the buyers in this process they're not rushing into anything so my question for you is why do you think jermaine got ahead of himself and decided that to announce that the deal was done when it really wasn't chris let's start with you because he uh works side by side with lavar ball so um... <laughs> I feel like that's just the, the, the ball way, you know what I'm saying? Do that so he can uh, make the other people who, the people other nego- the other people negotiating for the team think that it's officially done when they know it's not done so they can buy some more time. I don't know. I don't know. When I first read this, all I said out loud was, oops, because it's just like, who, it, I, that's not, it, it just sounds like, you know, a ball family thing to do. Um, hopefully, you know, they're able to win it out and buy the team, but I, I honestly, I don't, I don't know what made them jump out. I don't know if it was, uh, you know, Jermaine Jackson jumping the gun and saying that the team was bought or if the media heard him say that that was going to happen and they jumped the gun and says all i could say is it just you know lavar ball just back there smiling like yeah you did well jermaine that's how we do it you're really a ball (laughs) so i don't know it's funny though because it just kind of makes lamello and jermaine look silly uh, if they aren't actual the actual owners of the team um and i kind of wonder do you think that the nbl would hesitate to let a teenager own an entire team in their league jackie can you tell me your thoughts uh, about the teenager thing? I don't know. I'm on TikTok now, so I would not want a teenager owning a, a professional <laughs> organization in any way, shape, or fashion. But um, I think that he would have to present himself with some investors. Obviously, they're not going to think that he's going to run it you know, by himself. Um, so, yeah, no, him owning it by himself, that definitely wouldn't be a thing. But then again, at the same time, that might be why these beans were spilled so early. He might've said, we got this, we got this. And, you know, got them all hyped up, but I don't know if, um, but then again, it's not against the law. You know, we have a lot of teenagers. I think, uh, the girl, the little girl that's on little is like the youngest producer and millionaire. That, so it's not, it's not out of the realm of possibility. And he seems grounded enough. He could be the guy that does it. Yeah. I, I believe in him. I just wonder if others would doubt, you know, having somebody so young be, be an owner. Uh, Britt, what do you think the likelihood is of LaMelo actually getting the chance to own the team? Do you think it's high? Do you think it's low? I guess I would say it's more high. Obviously, like, they're going to want 
um, the publicity of it, money talks, you know, like if he has enough money and he brings people to watch a league that most of us didn't even know existed a couple, a year ago. So I think that that's going to speak volumes. And if he can bring that plus like maybe other like top young athletes to come play, like, that's hands down, like that's in and of itself. And especially going to the young people, look at Kylie Jenner, of all the people in her family, she literally is a billionaire. So I wouldn't put it like to young people. Young people nowadays are entrepreneurs and they know how to make money and they know how to use their publicity and stuff to then turn that into money, you know? So I think um, we shouldn't say or even think that like just because he's like a young guy that um he needs other people to do it around him because a lot of people nowadays are showing that young people are able to handle stuff very well by themselves obviously there's a lot of young idiots but there are some (laughs) good ones in the bunch as well young idiots yeah that's my new hashtag (laughs) but obviously i think jermaine should have just like we say all the time say less Like, like why did you say anything in the first place if you don't know that's so weird but also it could be part of their tactic to then push it forward because that's what that was a very lavarish thing that he did so i wouldn't be surprised if they did that on purpose Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's all very, very interesting. Um, Okay, I want to jump into our next subject. It's all about baseball. So they actually might be the first league, the MLB might be the first league to uh, return to their regular, you know, gameplay. So they're... The league and their players are increasingly focused on a plan that could allow them to start the season as early as May, which is shocking. And they have the support of high-ranking public health officials who believe that the league can operate safely, even with the coronavirus outbreak going on. There are still some challenges that they need to overcome. Nothing has been set in stone yet, but the plan right now is that all 30 teams would play games in stadiums with no fans, and it would all take place in Phoenix. The players, the coaching staff, the essential personnel, they'd all be um, sequestered off into local hotels where they would live in total isolation and travel only to and from the stadium. So they're still talking about this. They, They made it very clear that this is not something that's been fully set in stone, but um, they're considering it, which is shocking. I mean, May is earlier than I think any of us have been anticipating in recent weeks. I'm curious, what problems do you see arising from this plan? Do you think that this could actually work? Britt, can you tell me? Well, the MLB is, like you said, made up of 30 teams. Each team has 25 players on it. Um, That equals about 750 people that are going to be just from the team that would then need to get whatever tests are, whatever the case is, plus you include the personnel. So this is, like, uh, probably over a 1,000 people that we're going to have, like, in a spot at one time. And I think it kind of, and MLB did already say that they would have to do a month of just, like, spring training and, um, like, workouts before they would even start a season anyway. Right now, spring training split between Florida and Arizona for the teams. So it's not that far off because we're really half of those players currently we we spoke of this last week when we were speaking of the player that was traded in the middle of this all going on he's still in Arizona a lot of these players are actually still in Arizona some of them are still in Florida so um I don't think it's like that far off to say and again this isn't saying the whole season's going to be played like this they just want us to jump start stuff and if they think the season could resume in june or july or whatever the case is i wouldn't say that it's a bad idea to have them come together in may to just start what they said they would need a month of which is the spring training and practice before season actually starts so the only thing i see is the big issue here obviously is because we're still i mean obviously we've gotten way 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 more tests than we have had but there's still people that haven't been able to get tested obviously that could change if health professionals are saying that maybe possibly in May we would have enough tests to test anybody that needs to be tested plus give a thousand tests to the MLB so they can test all their players then go go for it you know but as of today it seems obviously kind of like oh but there's still tests why would we test all these people but who knows what is happening behind doors that we don't know of yet like obviously we talked about the Patriots sending all these masks and I'm sure tons of tests are on their way to us as we speak and we just don't know about it yet so if there's a a place that we could get to where everybody that needs to be tested can be tested 
And then you can also still use extra tests to make sure all the MLB players and personnel and whatever get tested. I don't see a problem with this. And, like, I mean, anything could happen quickly. So I don't, I don't see it being, like, far off to say May for that. Obviously, that's not how their regular season would start off. But getting back into spring training and stuff, I totally see it happening. Wow. Okay. Well, if the MLB does successfully do this, do you think that could influence the NBA, Chris? I, I, my, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, if they, it, it, Britt nailed it on the head, okay. and I've been saying that even we about the about NBA, NBA yesterday. Yes, um, if there's the test that they can get to the players themselves, then yeah, I see them going through with it. But then the same thing has to go over to the NBA as well. So. The, the biggest thing with coming back whenever we come back is making sure that we don't have Rudy Gobert situation all over again. So I, I feel like as long as that is figured out, whenever they decide to come back, May, June, July, whenever it is, if they feel like they have a way where they have tests for the leagues themselves, I say why not. And I, Britt hit the nail on the cover. I couldn't even say it better because she's right. Like if they're able, and I said the same thing about the NBA, if they're able to get the test for the league itself, and they can do the same thing in the NBA and still be able to have the test for people who need it out here, you know, in, in the real world, then I say I, I, I think that is something that we could, you know, start to make steps in that direction. Yeah, for sure. Well, Jackie, I'm curious, do you feel strongly that this, uh, you know, MLB starting in May plan is too optimistic? Do you think it's actually like within the realm of reality let me know i just don't think the logistics work you know today's april 7th so we're talking about you know next month um and you know i know what we're saying and i i hear Britt and chris and i i agree in theory if we can get enough tests to test everybody and then still have enough left over but that's not going to happen i mean you can go on your twitter right now and you can see countless people that have said oh i went to get tested they told me i didn't have they didn't have enough and now i'm home suffering through this i don't know if i'm suffering through a flu or suffering through the virus and i think it's just an organization if it was me i mean i understand the business aspect of it you want to get out there you want to make the money as much as you can, you know, as soon as you can, especially since, you know, we're definitely going to probably be heading for a recession after this whole thing is over anyway. Um, but I just don't know if I would want to be that organization that gets that tweet from like 10 people that are like, oh, the MLB just tested the whole entire team. And I'm sitting over here with my grandma who hasn't been tested yet. I wouldn't want to have that responsibility. Yeah. So unless because the court of public opinion is going to drag you in this situation. So unless you had a plan in place that said, hey, for every test that we get, we're donating 10 tests. You know what I mean? Something like that. So you could cover all of your bases. I just don't see the logistics of this working. Personally. Yeah. Okay, let's get into our next story um, about Jason Tatum. So when asked if he would participate in the NBA's horse competition, he revealed that he doesn't have a basketball hoop in his house, so he... <laughs> actually can't and the reason that he doesn't have a hoop is because they're quote kind of expensive maybe i'll get like a hoop that i could put on the outside of a garage or something so okay there's a lot of things going on here it's we've known that he is a frugal guy there was that story <clears throat> excuse me recently that he doesn't spend any of his nba salary i appreciate frugality uh but it's also sort of bizarre in this situation um Typically, he'd have access to a gym and a court and exercise equipment, so he wouldn't necessarily need to have a hoop or a court in his home, but in a time like this, it seems like you would want to invest in something like that. He says this is the longest that he's gone without playing basketball. So my question for you is, shouldn't he be willing to part with the cash to install a hoop in his home so that he can practice, even if it's not to take place in the horse competition? Jackie, I see you nodding your head over there, so tell me what you think. I tweeted him when I saw this story. I tweeted him an organization that can come build a whole basketball I'm court with a nice saying, bouncy floor and I'm everything saying, for $3,000. Shut up. Saying, Shut up. If I could do that, <laughs> I could get that correct. basketball court. Me, yeah. right now. And I don't make nowhere close to the much stop. Stop playing. He's doing too yeah. much. Yeah. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I think that this would be a smart investment during this time, especially. Uh, Chris, is his frugality typically a good thing, or does this show that he's definitely taking it too far? Well, I'm all for, you know, especially him being as young as he is. I'm, I'm glad that he's paying attention to his um, his dollars and what he got. But, yeah, no, I'm, I'm home with Jackie on this one. Like, when I saw this and I read this, I, you missed me with that. Like, you the, you are the Celtics right now. You could get 
uh, people to help you out getting uh, a hoop, even if the, if it's like you said, a, a hoop that you put on your garage or something like that, without spending a cent. You are the Boston Celtics right now. So I, to me, this whole thing is just him crying out for like, oh, what is me? I'm Jason Tatum. I'm like, no, miss me with that. Get yourself a hoop. You could do it. We just talked about Steph Curry last week putting together a damn hoop by himself. You can right. get one of those too. I, yeah, I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, I tell, Amazon I thought it was is still funny. delivering. I don't understand what's happening right like, now. We get it. You got your money. You're taking care of it. We get it. But come on, get yourself a damn hoop. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? I, I think it's funny. Go to the grocery store. Get one of those old bat. You know those crates <laughs> that you those fill up with and... sand in the yes, back. Exactly. <laughs> Do that. Exactly. <laughs> no, I think it's crazy though. Like at this point, I'm sure now he probably said that because now ten basketball hoop making companies have just sponsored him and said yeah. they were going to send him a hoop. I'm sure. Sure, you're already. right. That's like he's too. probably getting a free hoop as we speak now, installed into his home as we speak right now. But like, especially like a guy that's literally going to go into this off season working on his extension and contract for next right. year. Like, don't you think you would want to keep practicing your shot? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just wondering, right. like, because you're literally going to be going into a year where you're going to be asking for that real big money. To where maybe you could buy your basketball. Like, that that's an investment for that moment when you are signing your next contract. So, you I mean, come on. If it's just a regular person, but this is your actual job. You know, right. I spend exactly. money it's in an about investment. this light that keeps flickering behind me. But, you know, like, you just got to do some yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. It's not like he's going out and buying a new game console. You know, he's not sitting there playing video games. This is a basketball hoop, something that would actually be beneficial to his career in the long run. So, I don't know. I'm with you guys. I think that this is kind of silly. Um, let's get into the final need-to-know news story. So Stephen A. has some thoughts, as usual. Um, he <laughs> said he would have taken Sam Darnold. Wait, sorry, what does it say? Um, Sam, Sam Darnold picked third overall by the Jets over Baker Mayfield. He said, quote, that's not to sit up there and act like Baker Mayfield can't play. He's not a scrub. Me, personally, I thought Sam might have been the better fit. He's two years younger. He's about two or three inches taller. He's bigger. But more importantly, he doesn't talk nearly as much as Baker Mayfield, inciting dudes to come at him in an even more ferocious fashion to shut him the hell up. And then he went on saying, the reality is, Baker finds himself as the quarterback, putting them in even more bad situations than he should. He had more versions of different commercials with progressive than he did wins on the NFL football field last season. That is absolutely pathetic. Max Kellerman said that the blame should be more on Freddie Kitchens. Do you guys agree with Stephen A. Chris? I'm going to start with you. <laughs> I, I, and I hate that you start with me because now I have to say these words that I can, I, I hate saying, but I agree with Max Dang Kellerman. It. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I feel like it was, uh, and we've said it on this show when we were in studios, I, I believe that the Browns season last year was a Freddie Kitchens thing, not as much a Baker Mayfield thing. He is in year two. I'm not worried about Baker Mayfield. We saw what he do in his rookie year. He's going to be fine. Um, I think Stephen A's, he's entitled to have his opinion. I don't agree. I, I feel like the Browns need that kind of umph, that kind of character, that kind of guy that has swag and the talent. And the Browns need some like that so they can be an attractive team to watch because we got people like Jackie that are making sure that they stay trash so we need guys like Baker Mayfield though okay and, and Sam Darnold's really like calm and collected Mr. President kind of guy right. that w- I don't think that would have been so great the, on the Browns so yeah you guys made Wait, me say are that are you making sure that they stay trash are they yes not you are all on their own no <laughs> you want them to trade to anybody with, with talent you don't want them to, to be person. great one person for now Killing for now everybody. the minute they <laughs> sign somebody else you gonna want them gone to what they brought in fill in the blank no he needs to go somewhere we go i'm, I'm already ready for it i'm already ready for it <laughs> Britt, i feel like you have something to say i saw you shaking your head over there um, so i just agree with that a lot i think obviously hindsight's always 2020 like 2018 draft like we also remember sam darnold was selected after baker um josh allen josh rosen and then But the last pick of the first round was Lamar Jackson. Mm. And so obviously looking back, people are probably thinking there would have been better options than Baker Mayfield. I believe that was one of the worst quarterback draft classes we had seen in a long time. And I don't think any of those picks were great picks at that moment, honestly. 
And I don't think Lamar, and this is not saying Lamar Jackson should have went to the Browns. He absolutely should not have. The Browns do not fit Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson does way better with tight ends than he does with receivers anyway. So I just don't think that there's a good fit there. I think it was better that he stayed behind Joe Flacco and then got a, got a chance to ease into it when Joe Flacco got hurt. And then, you know, he won his first, or won his first game as a starter or whatever, and then he's just progressed since then. So I'm not saying Lamar Jackson should have went there, but I don't think Baker Mayfield was the best selection because you basically just got Johnny Manziel all over again. And I'm not going to say that talent-wise, and I'm not saying that Baker Mayfield is not talented and he doesn't isn't going to have this opportunity to be good in the league. I don't think that that's the case, but I think what the Browns needed at the time, I don't think... Baker Mayfield was that guy. He's him and um, Johnny Manziel both won a Heisman. They both were big personality guys. They both were also very immature guys. And to come in and be now, you have to go into a spot where you have to be a starting quarterback. You are this. I mean, I think him and Freddie Kitchens actually had a good relationship with each other I just obviously when you have a rookie head coach coming in it's not that great for you as a quarterback that's new to the league as well so I don't think that was going to be a good match ever but I think him even going there was silly because he the Browns are everybody's too young on the team you need to have a guy that is even though Sam Darnold is younger than him like, you need to have a guy that is a leader, and that's what Sam Darnold is. Sam Darnold's in New York. New York has bigger glitz and glam than the Browns yeah, will ever have. And it doesn't yeah, matter. He has nice. to deal with the community and deal with, like, being in New York and at the clubs and all that kind of stuff. Put Baker Mayfield in that situation would have been a totally different story. You put Sam Darnold in Cleveland with the Browns, and he's a leader. And I think that's what the Browns needed because no, there's no leader on that team at all. So I think that that Stephen A. was correct in that instance was saying that like Sam Darnold would have been a better fit for the Browns. I even think, even though I don't really like how Josh Allen turned out or Josh Rosen turned out, like I think Josh Allen would have even been a better fit almost for the Browns than Baker Mayfield just because the whole organization needed a leader and they never got one. And that's why they're struggling like they are. Well... You guys, that wraps up Need to Know News, so let's get into the post-up. Oh, it's time. It's time for the post-up. <laughs> it's your boy, Chris, quarantine edition. Yeah, see, I'm going to say that, too. We're going to be back on the, the, the desk, back at the formal studio, and I'm going to say this what quarantine edition. Just out of, yeah, I'm going to be saying, right. right. <laughs> I'm still going to be saying quarantine edition by habit. Anyways, uh, we're not, not many of this ones, so we're going to get through these pretty quick. Uh, first one... Um, a little close to Brit because there is a moment in Chris Paul history that no one could ever forget. And it was when Steph Curry destroyed his ankles on the baseline. And we all remember that. I don't even need to put a highlight because we all know the play because it was played we'll over and over again. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, we've seen it <laughs> enough. Um, the, well, the apparently, I guess the uh, anniversary of that play was a few days ago. And <laughs> the two of them were on a live together. And Chris Paul finally had his opportunity and for us to see to address Steph Curry on what happened and um it, it didn't go didn't go quite as you know bad as you think but it was still dope to see CP3 and him talk about it and hash it out so here's that video hey listen we know the anniversary just passed you know what I mean they're talking about everyone behind the back and all that listen man listen listen he he got me. He got me. He got hey, me. He goes, the funniest he got part me. was like the funniest part is how many times we've all been dropped, right? Like you didn't drop me at least three times. I got you that one time in LA. Brandon Jennings got me my rookie year. Like you can never ever ever live them down and they just gonna pop up. Just hey, but listen, <laughs> hey, but listen, this is what you always say too, Steph, and I know you say it at your camps and I say it at my camp. If you play defense long enough or right, hard enough, enough. You go after it. I play defense half the time, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, it may- 
and I love how like Steph Curry slipped that at the end because they're talking about like, and this is true. This is true, true at any camp you've ever gone to if you play basketball that they tell you you gotta play hard defense, but you're gonna get caught eventually. It's gonna happen. It happens to the best of us, as you know, Chris Paul. We saw the play many times. Um, but Steph Curry slipped in at the end. He's like, yeah, I would know. I only play defense half the time, so I get it too. So, um, before we talk about this clip, this this clip here in general, um, Britt Johnson, our resident um, Clipper fan. Uh, I don't have to ask you if you remember the game, but were you one of those Clipper fans? Cause my little brother was one of them um, who just played it off like so, whatever. It didn't happen. Was the big deal, or did you did you respect the crossover? Um, no, I respected it, you know, I'm fine with it, because there's moments where, like, like, everybody said, it happens to everybody, so, I, exactly. I'm, I'm okay with accepting moments and moving on with my life, I respect I'm not that, that crazy, I, respect I don't think that. I any respect Clippers, that. I feel like no Clippers fans are, we all, we all recognize Nah, my little brother was hot about it. He, he was pretty upset about it. He's like, nah, Steph Curry ain't nothing. Oh, man, Chris Paul's still better than him. He's a better point guard in the league. I know, my little brother was not about it. Um, and then I then I relayed that question to you guys. Uh, because we were talking about yesterday about uh, the Aaron Gordon, Dwayne Wade thing and them, you know, hashing out whatever mini beef that they have. So this is a similar, I feel like it's going to be a similar situation like this. It's going to be. Aaron Gordon going in, what's happening? You're going to see Dwayne Wade doing the same thing Steph Curry did, laughing like, ha, 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 ah, I made a mistake. Ah, this is so funny. Ah, ah, ah. Do you guys think that that conversation between Aaron Gordon and um, Dwayne Wade is going to be similar to the conversation we saw between CB3 and um, nope. uh, you think there's going to be more beef? Yeah. You guys it's really think that Aaron Gordon's right. that right. upset about on it? Fresh. Right. <laughs> I also, if we would have heard Chris Paul and, and Steph talk about it a, a couple months after it happened, that uh, that conversation wouldn't have went like that either. This is years later. You Plus, really what happened with Clippers anymore? What happened with Aaron and Dwayne was a lot more. Um, it, like Aaron said that he's not going to take part in the slam dunk competitions anymore. So it's enough to get him to like completely remove himself from something. So I think there's a lot more negativity there than what's going on with CP and Steph. I think it's a respect thing because even if, you know, even if they had talked about it like days after, I think it still would have been better because you can respect each other as athletes. Dwayne Wade was disrespectful in how he <laughs> scored that and yeah. we have beef. <laughs> Okay, all right. Y'all think this is okay? I still don't believe it's gonna be that deep. I feel like it's gonna be so underplayed when they talk to each other. But hey, I hope y'all right because it'll give us something more to talk about. Um, but in that same tone, CP3 did not let some melts go because I thought he was gonna give a lighthearted response of, with the whole you know Chris Paul fake laugh meme that we saw at the end of the um, game against the uh, the watch the Golden State Warriors when he was on the Rockets. Um, that whole you, everybody knows that meme. Well, he addressed it. And, um, yeah, he, he was really, really short and very quick to why he fake laughed at Steve Kerr to watch the video. Why did I fake laugh at Steve Kerr? It wasn't funny. About what our guys just said, a 15-point Rockets lead. <laughs> NBA Saturday prime time. Yeah, I never get so yo. But yeah, that all right. So that's what I'm saying. Like that was that was a few years ago too. But he's like, man, that thing wasn't funny. I love how they had to bleep them out too. But oh well, all right. CP3 still a little bit petty. I love that about CP3. Anyways, moving I mean, on. This to... is the same guy that went into the locker room for the Clippers to try to and like then... get a fight started. Like went yeah. through the secret entrance. So <laughs> come on. No, it's not. the same guy that'll call violation. Violation. His shirt is out. Violation. I'm about to say, same dude that'll call his own banana bro. Like, right. come on now. Yeah, CP3, yeah. yeah. He could still got inside him. Anyways, this one, um, this one's for the fellas, all right? Because uh, I know we all going through it together, you know. I know ladies have your problems, too. But we got something that's a little bit important. As you can see, I'm wearing my hat today. Because this is a very serious situation. Fellas in the chat, I know you know what I'm talking you about. hat every day, though. Right? I did not. I haven't <laughs> wore a hat in a while. I have not wore a hat. His, he got Thank a compliment you. on his hairline. Thank yesterday. You, thank oh, you, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, that compliment would have been there today, so that's why the hat's on. Anyways, um, <laughs> that being said, uh, for a lot of us uh, fellas that, you know, care about hairlines, care about getting their hair cut, we all know that, you know, the messiah of, of hairlines and waves goes to the one and only Jalen Rose. And we've been taught, there's been, you know, people charting him as the best hairline in the league, and he's not even playing anymore, best hairline in the game. We all know that. But now, with the quarantine stopping these barbers from, you know, taking care of what we got 
to be taken care of. We got Jalen Rose looking like Jalen Rose on the right here, where you can see that there's some straggles and some, you know, loose hairs. You see the upset look on his face. You see a little bit of, you know, <laughs> trying to get through it. You can see the stubble in between his perfectly put together goatee. So, as you can see, quarantine is so strong, it even got Jalen Rose away from his barber and his facts, ladies and gentlemen, his facts. So, he even responded to this with his tweet saying the struggle is real. Ladies. Real. Now, I, I, I hey, just need to know. he better get Molly. I would say, right. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. No, that, no. You, Molly uh, cannot. No, 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 no. Don't touch. No. That no. is the holy grail of hairlines. <laughs> Molly, you leave that alone, all right? Yeah, that's, no. that's like being like, oh, Jay-Z can go in there and tell uh, Beyonce right. how to sing a line. No, Jay-Z is no. one of the greatest rappers of all time. I ain't going to ask him that to help Beyonce <laughs> stay sing. Stay in your lane. You leave that alone. Lane. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that, that's a shame, man. To see that, I really feel like there's all hope loss with the <laughs> Rona going around. Anyways, moving on to number four. Giannis wants uh, some respect because he got both the um, Lopez twins on his team now. And Bleach Report was, in, was out here disrespecting Robin Lopez, okay? Now, clearly, we all look at this picture, and you know that that number 42 belongs to one Lopez brother, and it isn't Brooke. And then, beyond that, you look at the hair on Giannis' head. Brooke ain't never had his hair that long. Right. But Bleach Report had the audacity to say that it was Brooke Lopez and Giannis Antetokounmpo swapping hair. And Giannis was not a fan of that because he wants Robin to get the respect that he deserves for all of his hard work and dedication in his hair. He don't need no no lineup, okay? Because he got, he got it the way that... He got it. So Giannis, uh, he tweeted, that's Robin Lopez hair, not Brooks. Give Robin's hair game some respect. Now, we just talked about one great hairline, one great, you know, tape up. And now we're talking about the caveman look that Robin Lopez has. Um, I, I wish I put the other pictures in there because, the, you know, uh, we had we had the Clippers swap. We had the Lakers swap. The Clippers one was my favorite because I feel like once Kawhi finally cuts his braids, the world will still be fine because he looks fine with the with the shortcut. He didn't look any different. But my question to you guys is, was that laziness out of Beach Report for going um, by, by giving the credit to Brooke Lopez? Or was that just a common slip up? And once again, is Giannis paying way too much attention to social media? I'm going to throw that to Jackie All first. All are paying too much. We don't have anything else to do. To Neither do does Bleacher right. Report. They could have taken a little bit of extra time. They could have. That's what I'm right. saying. You don't have... What else are you doing right now? Oh. That, that was in incredibly lazy. And no, Giannis is not paying too much attention. He's paying just enough attention because he, <laughs> he needs to nothing. see this kind of stuff. He ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> uh, Britt, did you see the um, the picture of the Clippers, the Clippers swap? I don't have it saved, but did you get to see that the swap between no. Paul George and Kawhi? Oh, you didn't get to see it. Oh, I see. I should have put it on. I should have put that in the Lakers <laughs> for you guys. Chris, Good, Devin. I, yeah. I will say I did see that one, and that was, was just my ask. favorite as well. See, me too. Yeah, like there's a lot of fun ones, like you know James Harden um, beard on Russell Westbrook, and they swapped it like blah blah blah. That's cool. But to me, the biggest one because it felt realistic. Because you know that there's gonna be that season. A AI even did it. That Kawhi is just gonna let the braids go, and knowing that he's gonna look fine with them since he was at San Diego State. Even yeah. before that, I don't think it's ever gonna, gonna happen. And AI remember that too, one though. summer. That one summer when every there was a picture of Kawhi and everybody had thought he had cut his hair off. Right. And it was like a false to, alarm. It yeah, was, but it like broke back. the internet. Like it was crazy. But he just had it not in braids, he had it like in a ponytail back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But everybody thought he finally cut his braids off. It's never it's never gonna happen. Kawhi I don't know, man. I said the same thing about AI. But AI showed it live All Star yeah, Weekend when he did. cut his hair. That is that iconic. So too. I feel like yeah. Kawhi Kawhi Rip Hamilton's <laughs> another one. Okay, we'll see. see. But right, with the, the Brooke, Brooke is like so much better too. The, like no offense, they both actually went mm -hmm. to, they both went Stop. to high school where I went to school at, but like across the street, they went to the private school memorial. So they're from Fresno as well. They all went to school with Quincy Pondexter, and then they all ended up playing in the league and stuff. So I think it's just like so sad that you like mess up the brothers like that right. much. Like we get their twins, but he they distinctly have totally different hair, and they are totally different levels of playing basketball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you should not mistake them at all. Yeah. Did I anybody switch up LeBron? Because I'm surprised. LeBron and AD. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Didn't I didn't like, like it. it. Yeah. Oh, Devin, you didn't like it at all. Phone. No. <laughs> and an AD with LeBron's uh, hair looked like Rudy Gobert. I didn't like theirs. Theirs wasn't that great. Uh -huh. I, sh I should have put those in there for you guys. Yeah, I, I didn't think that far yet. It, yeah, it wasn't great. The Clippers one was dope, though. Anyways, um, moving on to... <laughs> speaking of LA, my last uh, news here in Post Up is Hard Knocks 
is what's well, planned. I mean, we'll, hopefully everything goes according to plan, but it's planned for Hard Knocks to have their first season of following two teams. And it makes sense because they'd be following both L.A. teams because of the m- new move to um, their stadium in L.A., Inglewood, to be specific. Um, BR Gr- Gridiron posted, Hard Knocks is planned to feature both the L.A. Rams and L.A. Chargers if there's a training camp this year per Adam Scheffner. First time the HBO hit is featuring two teams. Now, before I read what the internet has to say, I'm curious what you guys have to say about them clumping the two teams together. Like, I get the reason, but I'm not a crazy fan of it because we saw the Rams not but, what, two, three seasons ago? So it would have been dope to have, like, the Chargers get theirs, you know, and maybe, like, throw in some clips of, you know, the Rams are going through the same thing because they normally do do that in certain episodes if, you know, they combine with the teams. But you don't think uh, they're playing up the battle for LA thing so, that we're kind of going through now? Probably. They, that, I mean, yeah. they, I think they're trying. They're just trying to get the most out of this new stadium. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but at the same time, they can't do the race because Raiders was last season or two seasons, whichever it was. I already got them mixed up. But um, Brent looks very aggressive. I want you to get your thoughts out before I even move on. Because this is such fake news. There are rules to being on hard knocks. Did they all of a sudden change all of the rules for hard knocks? That's, Neither that's one of right. these t- teams are allowed to be on hard knocks. The rules. Wait, you care to? Are- yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna ask you, you, you cannot to have like a rookie head coach for that yep. upcoming season. You cannot have been on the show in the last 10 seasons and you can't have been to the playoffs in the last two seasons. And both of these teams were in the playoffs last year. So they can't break all the rules and then just decide to have this. Like there's only five teams that are eligible for being on hard knocks this upcoming season. And neither one of them is a Los Angeles team. So I think this is silly to even entertain this because it's not going to happen. Like, they, they're all of a sudden throwing all their rules out of the window after they've been having Hard Knocks on for like over a decade, 15 years now Hard Knocks has been on and now they're randomly just going to change everything just right, this right, right. one season for like to have it be both the LA teams when literally they literally would be breaking all the rules but like the rookie head coach one like that doesn't even make sense. It's not going to happen. Devin, I'm curious because hear, hearing what Britt just said with the rules and everything like that, but do you see this being more because of it being L.A. and because of the storyline that that's the reason why they would even entertain that and for the first time throw all those rules that Britt just named away? Or is it just, you know, desperate times called for desperate, desperate measures? Well, I think people love the Battle of L.A. story. I mean, we have that with basketball. We've got it with football over here. So I think it does make things interesting. And I see people in the chat saying maybe the rules don't apply anymore. Maybe they're changing the way they're doing things. I don't know. I mean, I think it does kind of like up the ante a little bit if that's what they're going for. But I'm not really sure. Yeah, which is which is why I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I, I agree. I'm with you on that. You produce the show. Can't you decide, okay, I'm changing the rules of my show? Uh, you well, know, let I us get, know that I first. The, well, no, I get that. But I'm just saying, like, maybe now they're going to milk this just to the hilt because you do have these two teams. Like you said, there's some there's a money aspect involved. We've got this new stadium now. You know, there's a lot of things in play. That, and you don't know who whose hand is get, being greased in this deal. You know what I'm saying? So it's... I don't know if it'll happen. I agree with Britt. There are rules, but at the same time, I know that money talks, and so them rules mm-hmm. might might be going a little bit quiet now, depending on how much money's on the table. Yeah. So I think it, I think it would be silly to not look at like I mean, the even this the L.A. like Battle of L.A. story is not even like really for football. It's, it's not, not that, that big of a story right. because people not aren't wrong. Rams or Chargers fans. Like yeah, there's so I many of the that. teams. So. I just looked up Steelers, Lions, Jags, Cards, and Broncos are all the only teams eligible. I think Pittsburgh with the new, like, say they get Jameis there or some other, like, player that's competing with Ben, Big Ben, you know, and they're going at it for the quarterback spot or whatever, like, depending on who they get drafted. Like, there's so many other storylines of other, of where we can see other things. Like, Jacksonville Jags would be a good storyline, too. Like, I think there's going to be better storylines. Kyler Murray, like, with um, the Cards and then... Obviously, huge if the freaking um, Watson thing happens. Like, if that's... Or not Watson. um, Uh, Hopkins. uh, Hopkins. Yeah, Hopkins thing happens. Huge story there. You know, like, there's... I just... Like there's so many. So what would better, be what would be the reason for doing this then? If there's so many, because I definitely think the we Broncos know what the be reason would be. I, I oh, just, that's what I'm reason. saying. I think it's fake news. That's why I'm saying. Like I don't think. You think Adam Schefter will drop fake news? You think this is it? That, you think his 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 credibility's over, Britt? You calling his credibility over? 
not over, but this is one of those He's things where up. we ain't got nothing else to talk about. So mm. I guess I'm going to like put a story on it. Maybe they're looking at this for the next, I don't know, in a couple years. But then at that point, you don't know because you wouldn't want the Rams or the Chargers, like their fans don't want their team to not make the playoffs continually. So yeah, then they could just sure. get on hard knocks. Yeah, like, yeah. Right, right, I don't right. know. Like maybe it's not for this season. Maybe they're thinking about it. Like maybe the actual the thing year. is, is something in the future. And they probably already have their team picked out for this season. You know, like you don't, we don't know that. Like maybe it's a future thing, but like, I think I, I'm just calling BS on this one. Okay. He, I mean, Adam's not God, so I'm not going to believe everything he says. So, so I just, oh, sorry. What were you going to say? I was going to read Delano's uh, uh, oh, message because I just wanted, oh yeah, yeah, no, fake news. Um, but he said, rules are meant to be broken, Britt Johnson. And with that being said, party at CK2K's crib and everyone's invited. I just want you to know, no. Social distancing, Delano. I know what you're trying to do, and you cannot get a haircut. Okay, <laughs> moving on. I'm gonna read these tweets because we have some responses for um, <laughs> with this news, and it has nothing to do with anything we just said. People are just out there hating in this world. First one was simply two pictures of of dumpsters because one representing the Rams and the other one representing foul. the Chargers. That yes, because they're dumpsters. They smell foul. Next one <laughs> is coming with this one saying that'll be easy if things with Big Rona don't allow fans both franchise will be used to that anyway saying that you know they won't be any fans they don't have fans anyway that's the facts next one saying two teams from la with a collective fan base of 12 people right people don't want it people do not want it they didn't watch when the rams had was on their first season back in la nobody watched that season Mm -hmm. it was terrible and last but not least obviously there was a lot of these but i picked this one out saying cam newton you know the move, basically saying that come to the Chargers and add yeah, some flavor to the sense. show. That would, that would add sense. some flavor to it. That would yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, we get to see that battle the Chargers. Between. That's <laughs> right. what I said. I would because they, they, they didn't make the play. Oh, but they, two they years did over. last they did. year. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Not you're this right. season that just happened, but the previous. Right. 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 So they, they yeah, did they an early AFC championship game. Yeah, I would watch the Chargers season. I think that'd be dope. Anyways, but that's it for me on post up. Take it away, Jackie. All right, guys, we have some WTF moments. Fun fact, um, Palau and Samoa are the only places, well, there's like three other places, but I can't say them, um, that have not one confirmed case of the coronavirus. So maybe that's where we'll have UFC. Maybe not. (laughs) Um, But UFC President Dana White has told TMZ that he is going to buy an island and he is going to have his UFC 249 there. It was supposed to be in... New York on April 18th, but he's saying that he is a day or two away from securing a private island, which will host the event. He says they're going to get fighters from somewhere, and we're going to bring them to this location. They won't know where they are headed to. Um, His plan includes extensive testing, and the island will be, of course, close to fans, with the event being streamed exclusively on ESPN. Um, Only a few select members of the media will be able to attend as well. How y'all feel about this island? Chris? You you just planted your head planted your head in your hand. So let's start with you. Uh, <laughs> is there? Come on, you could do it. I, I'm trying so hard to try to make this make sense. Like, uh, why? Like, I understand. He's, he's I under- dead serious. He's not that's playing. the thing, that, and that's what's serious. so crazy to me. Like, I, he's making Jay Williams sound brilliant right now. Like, I would much rather see the cruise thing than i t- to me that right. I, I don't know this is this is insane i just feel like this is an april fool's tweet but that we saw right. but he's dead a serious. One. It's a late, yeah but he's dead late serious technically though if they had like a corona outbreak they'd be on an island Private and island. outbreak the people that were on the island before them so who knows the, if they the live theory life. is to for it to just be like an island where only ufc people Fighters, staff, media, th- they can only be there. You know, like one of them fake islands that they build kind of thing. You know, so that's the idea. I, so, okay, my, my <laughs> question with it is, if, if it's a private island, it probably isn't just randomly equipped with a facility. So is it going to be like, I know in um, L.A. they have like where the Chargers play. Sometimes they have boxing matches out there. So... Is it going to be like an outdoor UFC thing where they're just all they have to do is build like the stage in the cage or whatever? 
Um, or like, what's like, are you going to like literally build a whole facility there? Like, I'm so confused. Just gonna and then where is everybody going to live? Like, you know, like, where it's are you going to sleep? It's like, an island <laughs> in a hut. We I'm need like, an <laughs> what about, you know, like using the restroom and having the money ocean. and like, and there's just so many questions. It's so, I don't know, not thought out. Like it's very, it's very, um, Ja Rule and um, yes. oh, oh, oh. all the yes. festival. The, that's uh, what I'm feeling here. That's yeah, the yeah, energy yeah. I'm getting. Yeah. And you guys know how that turned out. So right. that's the energy I'm getting from this, though. It's very Ja Rule ish of him. <laughs> yeah, well, several people asked him, like, are you are you serious about this? And he, he said yes. He that's doubled true. down on it. So, right. um, crazy we shall see so listen um for my next one first thing i want to say is i need you guys to watch more movies because i personally quote movies on this time show all the time none of y'all get it and i need y'all to pay a little bit more attention i get a lot girl (laughs) i be getting some of yours i'm like man that just went right past everybody but um look i'm gonna give you some lockdown movies okay you need to watch pandemic 28 days and no. most importantly, watch Contagion. Because if you had watched Contagion, then RG3's tweet would have been kind of funny to you. And you wouldn't have been so mad. But he went to Twitter to try to lighten this pandemic mode. And he said, whoever said one person can't change the world never ate an undercooked bat. <laughs> mm. It's funny. But to be fair, it wasn't an undercooked bat. It was bat poop that was eaten by a pig. And perhaps the pig was undercooked. But that's... Oh. Lovely. Lovely. So- <laughs> oh. So there you go. Um, but y'all got really mad and you guys got so mad that people were tweeting at each other. This one, this user was kind of rude with it. He said, if only COVID had the same trajectory as your career. Rude. Um, oh. That was rude. Oh, and far, then bro. someone followed up with, I love how someone who never played the game is trying to throw shade at a Heisman Trophy winner playing in the NFL. Grow up, dude. So look, the battles, the battles continue. And then one lady said, not smart, Robert, not smart. And then Zane Brown feels like me, but funny. It was funny. <laughs> Yo, these dog Twitter accounts, like, they, they, they defending uh, right. RG3. I don't oh, know yeah, what's going on. Watch, don't F with cats. And then you'll understand why these cat and dog people are the way they are. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's a great document. You are <laughs> this is my favorite one, though. He goes, also, we know that's how this happened. In fact, that's probably not how it happened. And saying it is racist. And Axe says, what races are that? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, look, if you guys watch more movies, then you can appreciate these types of things and you won't get so angry. So, watch the movies that I gave you. Okay? That's all I got. Let's move on to Brit's taste. Chris, your face is hilarious. <laughs> because I, the, the animal uh, pictures, like their icon pictures, all of them are animals. And it's just so funny. The one cat that comes out is upset, but the two dogs are defending. I don't know. I just, my brain goes, I don't know. Sorry. Go ahead, Brit. <laughs> It's time for Brit's Takes. Yesterday, uh, the NFL released the all-decade team. Some people were really excited. Some people were really surprised. Some people were really upset because of the people that were snubbed from it. So the Mm -hmm. Pro Football Hall of Fame Selection Committee is the group that selects all the players for the all-decade team. The decade team right now is from 2010 to 2019. Team, yes, because that is 10 years. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's the all-decade team from 2010 to 2019 is what they're looking at for the pedigree for their campaign during that period of time. Who were the best players ever? So it's basically formulated like an actual NFL team would be. There's 55 players that are selected. Um, some of them, like each position just has like a select amount of players. Like for quarterbacks, there's only two quarterbacks selected or whatever the case is. So each category of player, each position just has a select amount of players like you would normally kind of typically see on a regular football team. Obviously, a regular team has 53 people, but it's, you know, it's basically what you would see on a normal football team. So with that said, um, it was very, like, there's players that might have been really great and not made the list and it's very confusing on how they decided to pick the players that did make the list because it's it's basically a committee of 48 people that are making these selections so eight of the players that were actually selected were u- unanimous picks so um those included like aaron donald was on there von miller um adrian peterson and like tom brady for example 
Nobody had any questions about those guys. Like everyone's like, oh yeah, of course those should be. All 48 people that voted, voted, yes, this person should make this team. Um, there were two quarterbacks selected, like I stated. Um, Tom Brady was already one of them. The other one was Aaron Rodgers. A lot of people had a lot of issues that Drew Brees was actually snubbed from the list. And here's yes. what, during that, and I'm just saying what happened during this 10-year period of time, okay? So this doesn't include the seasons before or whatever. This just includes from 2010 to 2019 season. During that time frame, Drew Brees had nine or made nine Pro Bowls, yes. won one Offensive Player of the Year award, get this, set career records in the NFL for pass completions, passing yards, passing touchdowns, and completion percentage. Mm -hmm. Just shy of being included for winning a Super Bowl as well, because he actually won the Super Bowl the year before in 20, mm -hmm. uh, or 2009. Mm -hmm. So he's just mm -hmm. one season shy. Obviously, we all know how the first half of his career kind of went. He didn't play the first few, few years of his career, and then he went to the Saints, and then... That's when he started taking off and being this great quarterback, right? So he didn't make the original all-decade team, but it's almost like he should have been in, like, if it was from 2005 to 2015. Like, it's like it's weird how they did the years because then it changes dramatically if you think a player should right. be in it or not. But even so, out of the 10 years, he was a pro bowler nine of those times and literally broke all of those records and did not make the team over Aaron Rodgers because during that time Aaron Rodgers has won a Super Bowl. I think yeah, that's, that's the reason it. why. But in Aaron Rodgers, yes, he also is a guy that changed the quarterback position. You know, he is great, but I just don't see him getting picked during that 10 year span over Drew Brees, which we can all automatically say is going to be a first ballot selection when it comes time for him to go to the Hall of Fame hands down but this is the same committee that votes on the hall of fame that just not that didn't vote drew Brees in for the all decade team which is crazy another guy that i thought was very interesting that did not make the cut jason Winton was left off the list they selected two tight ends they were um travis kelsey and gronk yeah. first of all gronk was hurt half the time during the right. last game he didn't even play half of it Travis Kelsey just started playing I'm in the saying, league yeah, second yeah, half yeah. of the decade. So much so that neither one of these guys came within 40 catches of Jason um, Witten during this 10-year span. Jason Witten has more than 40 catches than either one of these guys. Yep. He's also went to, during this time, I believe it was five Pro Bowls. He won one, or he was in one All-Pro for first team. Like It's just so crazy that... Jason Witten, who is going to go down in history as one of the greatest tight ends of all time, got picked, oh, didn't make the team over Gronk and over Travis Kelsey, who Kelsey, both yeah. played a certain part. Yes, Travis Kelsey yeah. has been great in the last couple years, but he's a new guy. Like, he shouldn't be, like, maybe the next 10 years we might see him on the All Decade, but I don't think over Jason Witten yeah. he should have made it. I think this is absolutely insane. Another guy that was off the list for wide receivers. AJ Green like yes he's been out of the league for a couple years but when he was in the league the majority the seven seasons that he was in the league during this um 10 decade time or, or 10 year time span he was a top three receiver every single year so um he was a seven time pro bowler also during that time he had five straight consecutive seasons with over a thousand receiving yards or more and hit double-digit touchdowns in three of those seasons. Um, he did obviously suffer injuries the last, the end of his career, which is why he isn't playing or whatever. But like, literally, the majority of the decade, he was one of the top receivers. And for him to get like snubbed from the list, I think is absolutely insane. I don't know if half of these guys were just sleep or I don't know what they were doing, but. Mm. These three guys, and I do also want to mention, like, Des Bryant didn't make the list either, and then um, DeMarcus Ware did not make the list either, and basically Tyron Smith was the only Cowboy that made the list, so I think everybody that's in this committee hates the Dallas Cowboys for some reason. <laughs> um, I just want to say that on another point, but, like, because of the, I kind of did a list of the top ten snubs just in my head, and, like, three of them were Cowboys players. But, like, this list, especially Drew Brees getting picked 
are not getting picked over Aaron Rodgers, I think is insane. Jackie, I'm going to start with you. What do you think about this? Um, why do you think he was snubbed? And do you think that um, all of these all of these uh, committee members should be fired for not having true priests there? I fired. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was so when I first saw it, I someone texted to me. Um, it was a friend of mine that I thought was being funny. And was, I was like, why you send me this fake ass picture of this, you know, all decade? It's a made up <laughs> list. <laughs> right. I was like, girl, bye. And then I looked it up and, and why bam, you know, he's not there. So there was a side of me that I did go down the list. I was like, well, let me see who else was snubbed. I didn't, I didn't think Drew, um, Des Bryant should have been there, but I was specifically looking for D Ware who I didn't see. Um, and I was yeah, specifically looking for Jason. And when I didn't see Jason, I was like, okay, who the hell? is on this committee, you know what I mean? Because to me, this seems like an, even a novice, even if you're not a, if it's not your job to really know football, even if you've watched and you've kind of listened here and there, you still put Drew on the damn list. You still put Jason on the list. And right. I've seen some people in the chat say, oh, Jason Witten is old and slow. Now! Yeah. Okay, now! <laughs> We're doing what he did the last 10 years. Catch up. Catch right? up. Has, yeah, 10 years. 10 on. years. Come and on. So catch up. There was a side of me that I was like, okay, Clearly, there's some, some some of these people are either dating or married to some of these refs, so they decided to just stay on track with snubbing us, st snubbing snubbing my snake saint. So now, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say like, they snub the saint. It's the Drew Brees for sure, but we got we, we on saint? the list. We on the list. Well, we got on the list. I'm seeing my boy Jari yeah, Evans yeah, on yeah, there. Cam Jordan, Jari Evans. We got love on here, man. List. I wanted him to be at the top of the list I because get, I just feel like. You know, it, it's just a dope thing to be on. And then, like I said, going down the list, and D. Ware was amazing yeah, in crazy. Dallas. And and then when you think about what he did in Denver, like he literally went over to Denver and was like, okay, y'all didn't know how fly I was. Let me show you again. Right. Yeah, Jason Witten, he has intangibles. When you talk about all the catches he has, he, he was the number one receiver in Dallas for how long? Mm. For how long? He might as well have been a wide receiver. Right. And then... <laughs> And then and you he's think about, a big slow guy he's a, too. He's a big <laughs> slow guy. But see, then that's the other thing, though. When you're looking at the tight end spot, and I think that maybe our perception of what the tight end position really is supposed to be has changed because now we do kind of look at them as like you know a second receiver like option. A hybrid, but yeah, yeah, like a yeah. hybrid. But in theory, you're supposed to be able to block. Go back, look at some of these footages of Jason Witten literally leading the way for people. So mm -hmm. I just didn't really understand this list as a whole. Um, I was, you know, I know people got mad at me, but I agreed with the Antonio Brown thing because, again, you're looking oh, at it for be on the a span of time. Yeah. You know, people Why was somebody mad at that? Uh, I think people that they don't, like, know, him now, they they don't like him as a person list, but, and things. Of, but yeah. th that's what I try to explain to people. Like, you're not, you're looking at their body of work. Just like I see yeah. people saying, what about Cap? Cap only played for four seasons. Yeah. He doesn't have the accolades of a Tom Brady, Drew Brees, or Aaron Rodgers. So you have to look at their body yeah. of work. Yeah. And I feel like this committee didn't. I feel like maybe they only looked at a very limited amount of time. And it, and it wasn't the years closer to the beginning of the 10-year period. I feel like it was like the last four to five years that they just looked at. And, and it was so, crazy. Even this last Super Bowls, season, yeah. when Jason went, and went out and then came back this last season, he was great this season, too. Super very effective right. this season. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's like it's weird because he was that dude – the beginning of the 2010s and he was that dude to end the 2010s and mm -hmm. I, he, he okay so he hasn't won a super bowl so now he doesn't isn't deserving of being um like in this all decade team for the last 10 years yeah. because he didn't win a super bowl like same with Drew Brees he didn't like that's what the list is based on and though right that's 100 what this list is all and the names that aren't super bowl winners they're going by stats so they're it's really inconsistent and yeah i agree with everything both of you guys said i and honestly travis kelsey probably wouldn't even be my option behind um behind uh, uh wait Sorry, I'm looking at the list still, and just I'm seeing these. But yeah, I, like Travis Kelsey wouldn't even be like my number three option. Like I would go with Witten, and then I would go Antonio Gates. Like why are we forgetting yes. Antonio Gates? He was oh, yeah. he was gold in yeah. the last ten years. I know the Chargers weren't doing much, but the dude was like a an instant touchdown every yeah. single time they were in the red zone. So that's crazy to me. I, I'll put Witten above Gates though. But yeah, I, I wouldn't even put Travis Kelsey as my number three option. Um, I hear you on the AJ Green thing. I, I I think you can go back and forth with him and Julio Jones. I think it's about the same thing with those two. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, Aaron Rodgers. I really believe the only reason why he's on there over Drew Brees is because of that that uh, that touchdown, that um, 
Super Bowl, and I don't feel like that's enough. A lot of these names, I feel like that's the case with some of these guys that are being left off. Because, yeah, DeMar, they have not like, being and on they there. Have it's whole, crazy. whole groups of people. So they have, like, basically yeah. the whole Legion of Boom is on there. Like, yep. You know right. what I mean? They have, like, yep. groups of, like, obviously, I think Bobby Wagner totally, like, deserves it. Um, Richard Sherman totally. Larry Fitz, even though I think he's had an amazing career, he, he isn't, like, this super prolific, like, receiver yes at, like, oh, especially within the last team, 10 years he's yeah. just always like consistent and you can yeah. count on him but like he's not one of those big time receivers i would have taken him off the list and put aj green in that spot yeah, honestly yeah, yeah. like yeah you guys feel like with this virus they had plenty of time y'all have plenty of time <laughs> to to report. Vote right <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's definitely a lot of like controversial Crazy. controversial decisions with this list here. This conversation could go on and on, but we're yeah, out of time. It for could, like, you guys. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. As usual, we'll be back again 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks so much for the uh, fake hand sanitizer, you guys. Let us know if you think we're snubbed in the comments so we can keep chatting about it. Yeah, yes. keep, let it out down there in the comments. Subscribe, tap the bell, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah, but you're